Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I was not expecting to release one this soon. In my last video, I was struggling, pulling out my hair. It's the reason why I have this hat on. Sponsored by Tesla, just kidding. But hey, if you work for Tesla, give me a howdy do because I could build out the most powerful mapping interface you've ever seen in your life. I'm currently establishing a home for my own personal AI to take advantage of the world around me. It's a huge undertaking. Trust me, I'm losing my sanity over here, but damn it, we have made progress and i'm excited to show you that so with this let's jump into the overall application if i go to the home screen we can see that i have what is this interactive map that loads up you can go in between the different locations you could filter by different types you can click on any of these specific events and it's going to open up a pop-up to give you context on why that specific location is on the map so we're expanding in a lot of different ways i want to allow users the ability to create their own maps i want them to be able to post locations to other people's maps to their own map to what is the main app that overlooks all apps that is it's a lot of tedious stuff a lot of data but for what I have, I have been able to establish something that is groundbreaking. Currently, there is only one process of bringing Dash into Django, and that's through this pip install, Django Plotly Dash. I love this package, but I need to evolve off of it. I don't think it's going to be enough, and there's a lot of reasoning for that. If I dive into what is the back end of my production based application, you can see that I have 563 stateless apps in regards to just building out 1% of the map. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. It's a huge cluster of a mess, and I need to clear up all of this trash i need to reorganize i need to make it more mobile friendly i need to make it more seamless i need to make it faster there's so much work that needs to be done so what i decided on was to take what is this relationship that's all underneath the same application and to break this apart into two separate applications we have django and then we have dash they are connected but they are not connected if that makes sense they they they, 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 they can visit each other but they both have their own house they're not underneath the same roof so with that, I dive a little bit more in depth into how I got all this done while looking through what is this blog post that I've released on the Dash Plotly forums. So check it out, but this is the underlining architecture of you have Dash and then you have Docker hosting what is Django and all the things that are in that mess. For example, the Postgres database, the API, Redis, Celery, and yada yada. Anywho, with all that, I needed to start with the basics. The bare basics is just getting authentication down. How can I bring a user from what is Django into Dash and it continues on through the state of what is an application that is set up to automatically refresh and to provide a bunch of features that go against what is the authentication process. It has been something that I've been pulling my hair out over, but I'm excited to show you what I have. Before we jump into it, I'd like to start with just showing you the register page because I spent a little bit of time with this and I think it looks decent. Ideally, whenever you want to register an account, you get to slide over and you'd be like, this is my dude. I'm going to be this one right here. You can select where you are at and it's going to use this as a basis to set up a geo network around you so you can open up shops, you can communicate with other people that are active on the site, uh, you can unlock a lot of features and to actually display a lot of features. So it's going to be related to your account profile. So with that context in mind, let's go into the login state. Let's show how I was able to actually set up a relationship between Django and Dash and to break apart what was this complex development stack. 
So for me, if I go into login, we have a pop-up that gives us a username and password. So I just put in my username like that and I put in my password like so. And if it is authenticated, I get brought up to my user profile. As you can see, this is my user over here. He's dancing because he's ecstatic that he was able to get this done. And he made a breakthrough in something that nobody else has ever done. So kudos to him, I suppose. Um, but just to show you that this is the same account profile, that if I go into what is my Django application, you can see the same dude dancing. You can see the credits, they match. This isn't hard coded. Just to show you that this is dynamic. If I go over here and if I select what is a new image, so a wise old man, we'll throw that in here. We'll save it. If I go back into the application, then we can see that it updates to the wise old man. So with that, Ideally, on the profile screen, you're going to select your character, you're going to provide your information in, you're going to save it, it's going to take this information, it's going to send it over to Django, Django is going to take that information from the API, this is the API, and then it's going to send it right back to what is a Dash, and you're going to see your character displayed right there. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, and it's a lot more complex than that. Just to give you an idea, everything is ran through API calls alone. There's a lot of benefits to this. A lot of the front-end frameworks like Angular or React or any of the other ones that are being used on top of Django, they all take advantage of a relationship based off of API calls. So one of the groundbreaking things that I did in setting up this relationship is I made sure that I created token authentication on top of what is the user profile. So whenever you do any of these actions, you're given what is an initial token on login. This token is verified through different processes, and if the token matches what's on the Django side of things, then you get to receive the information for that specific user. This has many use cases, and for security, it's best practice, but for what is scalability, it has a lot of benefits. For example, taking in context what is a bank. A bank has an initial account page focused on the specific, all of the users give their information, that type of stuff. So if there is an application that is being built outside of the bank and they would like to get a bank account information, they have to ask for authentication. So the bank isn't going to give them all of the users. They're only going to give them what is a token in relation to the user that is trying to create this relationship between this outside application and the bank itself. So with that, other applications are going to be able to build off of my work and I can give them just users from what is my database and they're only going to have access to that specific user rather than having the whole rapport of all of the users in what is my project. So that's awesome. It's allowing me a lot of new things that I can do. And with that, I would like to dive into the code itself, the last bit of information. I'm not going to spend all the time going line for line, and you can look at what is my blog post that talks a little bit more in depth about some of these concepts, and eventually, hopefully, I'll make a tutorial video that's going to kick ass. But for the moment, this is what's happening. As you can see down below, we have stuff being returned in the terminal. We can see that login was successful. We got a 200. I'm running a lot of print statements here because I'm trying to figure this all out but at the end of the day just to tell you what is going on back to the api we have this project on the left hand side we have what is the main project this is hosting an app.py file that app.py file is related to the dash application that is running off of what is the pages it's using the data and the assets and it's taking all that and it's creating what is this beautiful front end now I have what is this other application that I just put inside this project so that I could better see how things are working. This is Django. Django has a bunch of different apps, but the only one that we are currently worried about is going to be this API demo. This API demo is over here on the left-hand side, and it's basically what is communicating to Dash. We have basic authentication, which is taking an API, HTTP basic auth request that's gathering the username and password. 
Scrolling down, we have a register, we have account info, and that's it. Um, it automatically creates what is the tokens after I got that set up within the settings and the URLs. But on the right hand side, we have the data. The data is the way that Dash is communicating with Django. Where on the left hand side, we have, have how Django is communicating with Dash. So with Dash, we have what is login, register, create user token, refresh user token, verify user token, get user info. Just to show this in action, I can run on this, and this is running off of the get user info, and it's getting a user where we have the user pip. So that's gathering all the user information that's being displayed for what is the profile page. Going back into the application, if I go over to what is the API call, if I scroll up, we can run a pip at this username. And if I execute that, we're going to get the user information. Where if I do pip1 and I run it, it doesn't work. It's denied. Not a real user. So with that, I'm excited to have all of this established, to have made the Leroy headroom and just expand into what is a new space. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the final solution. And as it is currently an active problem and project, it's subject to evolution. But the foundation is set. The ground is all laid. I have what is this advanced project that allows me the capability to scale into many different areas. It's not just a nice map. It's not just a way to hold users. It's a way for me to house AI for myself and for those that network around me so that we can create valuable tools, resources, and assets to take this world by storm. That's really where my headspace is at. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for supporting. Last video was phenomenal. Everybody, boom, 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 left and right. A lot of great positivity there. I'm excited to see this thing evolve. And I'll see you guys in the next one.